goes all the way back. Chapter 23 starts with something you've definitely learned before, which is the law of charges. The law of charges, you probably learned it maybe in sixth grade, some, at some point in middle school. Who can tell me what the law of charges is? Travis. Like charges are coming. So like charges attract, I'm sorry, like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Like charges repel, unlike charges. So, we have the different names of the different charges. What are the names, Dorfstetter, of the charges? Say again? Oh, well, those would be the, the, the particles, I agree. We have an electron and we have a proton, but even more basic, the charges are called. Vlad? Positive and negative. We could have called them green and blue. We could have called them guacamole. And all of those. Okay? But realize that they were just picked as positive and negative. In fact, there's nothing about one charge that is that you would call inherently positive or inherently negative. I don't really even know what those really mean. It's just that we have positive and negative charges. Mathematically, of course, this makes the most sense. All right, we can cause charge by we have in, we can cause a charge via various various different ways. One is conduction. Bless you. All right, charge via conduction. For example, I could take the rubber rod. <coughs> and I can put it against the dead rabbit. And when I do this, we get negative charges from the dead rabbit, which go on to the rubber rod. So the rubber rod now has negative charges. But this isn't very exciting. So let's try a different example. We'll do this one. If I take the balloon and I rub it on the dead rabbit, the balloon is again made of rubber. So we have negative charges going from the dead rabbit skin to the balloon. Then I can take it, I can do this. And it sticks to my head. So, same is true actually if I do it, rub it on my hair. Okay? So, when I do this, we get negative charges from my hair going to the balloon, and the balloon is negatively charged. So, why then does a balloon stick to my hair? Tyler? Because your hair is positively charged. My hair now has a net positive charge and the balloon has a net negative charge, so they attract one another. Okay, good, if I do this correctly, when I take the balloon away, my hair, part of my hair should be sticking up. Yes? Okay, why is part of my hair sticking up? Emily? Because it still has a charge. Because it's like brown balloon. But why, why is my hair, like I understand like these two stick together, but the question is, why is my hair now sticking up like this. John? It's positively charged, so it repels each other. So my hair, which is positively charged, is repelling itself. Okay. So then we can also do this, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, that's charge via conduction. When the two objects actually touch one another, a charge moves, flows from one object to another. That's charge via conduction. We also have charge via something called induction. Now, Charge via induction is going to, we're going to induce a charge. Now, this is what I consider to be one of my worst demos. This is one of the hardest to see, but regardless, I will do it for you. Here we go. We have an electroscope. Oh, no. Whew. All right, so I apologize to those on the ends. It might be difficult to see if you want to move a little bit. Okay, the electroscope, basically what it is, is a piece of metal attached to very thin metal foils here, and when the metal foils carry a charge, you can see the, how the charge is affected. So we have now a net negative charge when I take, and I touch the electroscope with the net negative, <laughs> with the negative charge, there we go, 
uh, you could see what happens to the foils because now the electroscope has a net negative charge. So what happened to the foils, Bill? Uh, both negatively charged. Okay. So same thing as my hair, they both have the same charge, in this case they have a negative charge, so the foils actually move apart one from one another, going back to the law of charges, because uh, like charges repel. Now, when I take my finger and I touch the electroscope, bing, the foils go back toward one another. Why is that, Tim? Uh, because the charges went back to your finger. Went back to my finger, what I did is I grounded the electroscope. Okay. I am attached to the ground. Basically, the ground is a giant well of charge that we can take and give charge to, and it's considered an infinite well of charge that you can give and take charge from as much as you want. So that, again, is still charge via conduction. Now, here is the demo. <coughs> Get excited. Charge via induction. The idea is I'm going to induce a charge in the electroscope without ever touching it with the charged object. Here we go. So, I have a net negative charge on the rubber rod. I bring it close to the electroscope, but I do not touch. Uh -huh. I then ground the electroscope. I remove the ground and watch carefully. Bing. Oh, apart. <laughs> do it one more time, okay? So here we go. I missed it. It is, it's that last moment, so it's really, it's really subtle, so you gotta watch carefully. When I remove the uh, rubber rod at the very end, the foils move apart. Here we go. Okay, I bring it close. Ground, I remove the ground and bing, they move apart. <laughs> I know, I know. And we will now ground it. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually walk through what happened there with the charges. So we're, I'm actually going to refer to some pictures in your textbook on page 710. I'm going to put them up here, but it's good for you to have the pictures in the textbook as well. So on page 710, you will find <laughs> We have, of course, today's desktop picture, which is a picture of Ryan um, this fall when we were going through and uh, raking leaves. So this is, they've illustrated the electroscope via a giant sphere, I don't know why. But the electroscope, to begin with, is, has a net neutral charge. Now it's important to realize that when we say the net charge on the electroscope is zero, we're not saying there aren't any protons or electrons there, right? There are a whole bunch of protons and electrons, it just happens that they have an even number. So we have the same number, the net charge is equal to zero. This is what it looks like before I bring the rod close to it. This is when I bring the rod. Now, I bring the rod next to the electroscope. The rod is negatively charged. So the negative charges are then pushed away from. Notice the positive charges are the protons. They're in the nucleus, so they don't really move around. It's the negative charges that move around. So the negative charges are repelled from the negatively charged rod. And they're then repelled down into the foils. And so when I brought this close, the foils actually moved apart. Then, I grounded it. This, just so you know, is the international symbol for a ground, and you do need to know that symbol, so you have to be able to identify the grounding symbol. So it is then grounded, and what happened when I grounded it? Look. All the negative charges went back to where we were getting some Actually, if you look, they don't go back to where they were. This is where we start, right? Yeah. So then, here, when I bring it closer, all it the negative charges are pushed farther away, and then what happened? It's okay, help them out. What happened to the negative charges? Um, they like, move through the wire to the ground. They move through the wire to the ground. Now, not all of the negative charges, clearly, but some of the negative charges move through the wire into the ground. Then I remove the ground, and then I remove the rubber rod, and what we end up with is a net positive charge on the electroscope. Okay? So going all the way back to the beginning, we started out with a neutral, bring in the rubber rod, it 
uh, causes the negative charges to move away from the negatively charged rod, then some of them move down the ground. And when I remove the ground and remove the rod, we end up with a net positive charge in the electroscope. This is an induced electric charge. It is induced because it was never, it was never actually touched by the charged rod. That's what it means to induce a charge. The other way we can cause a charge is a charge via polarization. Now, a charge via polarization is a different type of charge, and this is where you actually don't change the net charge of the object. You simply change the orientation of the charge. And the rubber balloon right now is held against the wall via polarization. The rubber balloon has a net negative charge. And what's happened here is the The wall is now polarized. So we've taken the wall and we've aligned the positive and negative charges. We've arranged them such that the, ne well actually this is the reverse of what we have here. But if the balloon had a positive charge, the negative charges would be attracted to the positive charges and the positive charges would be repelled. And therefore, the negative charges will be a little bit closer than the, po than the positive charges. Therefore, the net attractive force will be slightly larger than the net uh, repulsive force. And you end up with the object is attracted to the wall. And this is the most commonly forgotten one, which is to charge something via polarization. So try to remember uh, charge via polarization.